A lot of you ask me this question, who is a DBA or what is the DBA, right? Now, today the same question I want to ask all of you, but probably this question is for all the experienced DBAs, okay? So, what is a DBA? I mean, it's not database administration, it is data block access. This is your DBA challenge, put comments below this video and let us start the show. Welcome back guys. We are back with the new episode and today there is nothing special. We'll right away jump into our questions. So the first question of the day is what is LRU list inside Oracle instance? Guys, LRU list is not inside Oracle instance. It is the property of um, RAM, the way Oracle or the sorry, the way system RAM works. So the memory that you have in a server or the memory you have in your system or even the memory you have on your mobile phones, <clears throat> the memory has a property of LRU list. So what is LRU? LRU is least recently used algorithm. All right, I would want all of you to read about LRU algorithm. So what happens is it's very simple. So you have limited memory, right? In any system, if you compare, the memory will be less than the hard disk, right? So you might have like one terabyte of hard disk, but if you compare the RAM that you have in your system, it might be 8 GB, 10 GB or 20 GB, right? So RAM is always less than the hard disk. Now the question is why RAM is like smaller than the hard disk? The biggest reason is RAM is costlier, but hard disk is like, it's pretty cheap. These days we all know storage is very cheap, right? <clears throat> So reading and writing to RAM is very fast. Like if you put something and read out of RAM is very fast when compared to hard disk. And this is one more reason why RAMs are pretty costly, right? But that doesn't mean like you cannot afford RAM or you cannot have servers with terabytes of RAM. We do have servers where the RAM is in terabytes, right? We do have, but coming back to LRU algorithm, what happens is in your memory, not your memory, technically in the memory of a system. So if a file comes first, right? So it will go onto the top end of the memory. So we are assuming a virtual kind of like memory. So this is empty memory, okay? So you're reading a file, that, that file comes and resides onto the top of the RAM, okay? Now this file on the top, it is used only once. Now the user is asking for another file or trying to open another file on your system. So what happens is the next file comes in, it comes on the top of the list and it pushes the earlier file down. Okay. So only the recently used files will stay on the top of the RAM and the files which are not being used, they will come down one by one as the new files are being requested. Perfect. Now you might have a question, Arun, what happens when the memory is full? And the last file in the memory that we have, it is the file which was like the first open, right? Because the first open file will be at the end of the memory. Now what happens is when the user is requesting for a new file, the new file comes on top of the memory and it pushes other files down. So the last file in the memory, it is flushed out of the memory because it is not required anymore. Users are not requesting that file. Perfect, simple enough. So LRU is least recently used. Any file which is being used again and again, it will always stay on top of the RAM, perfect. And reading and writing to RAM is very fast and that's the reason why we have LRU algorithm. <clears throat> now you might also ask this question. So Arun, when we store the file on a hard disk, why are we reading from RAM? So that's what is like I'm trying to explain you guys. So reading and writing from RAM is faster. So what happens is if you are requesting a file which is on hard disk, that file will be first copied onto RAM and then it will be given to the user. That's how it works. You cannot open a file directly from the hard disk. So any file that you open which is on hard disk, it is copied to RAM and from RAM the output is given to the user. And when user is trying to make changes into the file, all the changes are made in RAM only. And when you save the file, a copy of the file is saved onto the hard disk. What I would request is even before like talking about LRU list inside Oracle instance. So why LRU list concept comes into Oracle instance is Oracle instance also resides on RAM. 
so it has to follow the rules that RAM follows. Now the RAM works on LRU algorithm and take this as your DBA challenge. Read about what is LRU algorithm, right? That being said, let's move on to the next question of the day. What is the process of securing an Oracle Armand generated backup? Very simple, straightforward. First of all, I mean, I don't know why would you want to secure? I mean, of course, it's a great idea. But in general, like the environments are already secure. But if you still want to go extra mile and want to secure the backups, what you can do is you can use Armand backup passwords. So while you trigger the Armand backups, you can set a password. You have to use the same password while restoring the backups. So using strong passwords while backing up your database is one method to secure Armand backups. The other method is using the Oracle wallet. These are the two main methods that you can use to secure the Armin backups. And guys, can someone help me put the comment or uh, write the command on how to secure the Armin backups below this video? Yeah, like uh, how do you take the backups while uh, setting a password for the Armin backup, right? Please put that comment or put that command below in the comments. Meanwhile, let's move on to the next question of the day. What is the difference between Oracle Rack and Active Data Guard? It is very simple and straightforward. You need to understand Oracle Active Data Guard is kind of a standby database. So if something happens to the primary database, people can be transferred or the connections or the users can be transferred onto the Active Data Guard. Now the beauty about Active Data Guard is you can actually run the select commands on the Active Data Guard. So let's say you have the primary database and you have the Active Data Guard and you have the real time application users who are connected to the primary database and you also have a reporting team. Now we all know reporting team will only run select queries, selects are from XYZ tables, right? So if the reporting team is also querying from the primary database, what happens? you are increasing the load onto the primary database, right? With the Active Data Guard, what you can do is, of course, the application users will connect to the primary database, but the reporting team, quality team, testing team, you can direct those teams to connect to the Active Data Guard where they are only using the, or only running the select statements. That's the beauty about Active Data Guard, perfect? This is Active Data Guard concept, but now let's look at the Oracle Rack. In Oracle Rack guys, it is instance level load balancing. What happens is you have a common storage and you have multiple instances, right? Now you have multiple instances which can take the load for the connections that are coming to the database. Now understand you have only one instance, one database and 1000 connections are coming. So what is the load on the instance? It's pretty high, right? But now if you split those instances and you make multiple or two node rack, you have two instances, 500 uh, connections land onto node one, 500 connections land onto node two. So understand like you have reduced the server burden, each server burden by 50%, right? So that way what happens is it gets like speedy execution and the servers will perform to their full potential. Now that's how the rack is different than the active data guard. So once again, guys, active data guard is a standby database which supports select queries and you can direct the reporting team onto the active data guard. Now, if primary crashes, you can still move all the users onto the active data guard. But in Rack, you have instance level load balancing. So instances will balance the load of the connections that are coming into the uh, database server. And then both the instances will query or get the data or fetch the data from a common storage. So all the data files are shared, all the control files are shared. So basically entire database files are kept onto a shared storage. So all the instances, the rack instances can read from the shared storage. That's the difference. So that being said, let's move on to the next question of the day. Can I run data pump in GUI mode? That means graphical mode. Yes, you can run. It's very simple. You have two ways that you can run it. The first one is you can use Oracle Enterprise Manager to run the uh, uh, data pump in graphical mode, or you can also run the data pump using the SQL developer. So that also gives you a graphical interface to execute the data pump. But that being said, guys, I think you should, uh, by now, you should actually become familiar with the 
non GUI method of running the data pump. Like I don't see a point in running it in graphical mode. It's better you master the uh, commands and uh, parameters that are used to run the data pump in silent mode. That being said, if you go to support.dbgenesis.com, that's the website, and in the search bar, go and type data pump, you will find a lot of articles where I have shown what parameters you can use for the data pump, right? Let's move on to the last question of the day. How can I update row ID in Oracle? Do you think you can update it? No, you cannot. Row ID is assigned by Oracle, right? So how can you change that address of the row? It's the physical address of the row where it resides on the hard disk. So Oracle is assigning that physical address and like you cannot change the physical address. It is assigned to the row. But if you move the row, if there is a row movement inside the database, if you delete the row, insert them back, you export the records and insert or import the records back, that's when probably Oracle might assign a new row ID. But as a normal user, you cannot update the Oracle row ID for any of the rows. That being said guys, let's move on to the most exciting part and that's the bonus question. I'm back guys and guys one of my team members he was trying to run the uh, join statement the Oracle join I mean they were trying to join two queries and uh, the uh, execution plan of the query was going for full table scan I mean uh, I was surprised uh, the team member was again and again complaining that oh you know what we have the primary key we have the foreign key but still the query is going for full table scan Arun what's the issue what might be the issue and I'm like okay let us look at this stuff and guys it is so silly you know when I looked at the query what happened is even though your tables might have primary key foreign key and you have all those set up done you have all the constraints to the table but if you're not using the indexes or primary keys in the where clause, then why would Oracle use your uh, like indexes? Oracle will definitely go for a full table scan. So what is the learning for all of you? Even if a table is having primary key, unique key, or all the keys and whatever indexes you have created, if the index column is not used in the where clause, Trust me, Oracle will go for a full table scan because Oracle doesn't know which index to use, right? So if you want Oracle to use indexes to like speed up your queries, you should have the column uh, kind of like used into the where clause. And if you're not using the column in the where clause, then definitely Oracle will go for a full table scan. So guys, good learning for all of you. Now, we'll meet in the next episode. Bye.